Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Andres Hake, and I'm the dean of GSAP. Uh, I'm very excited to welcome all of you to, the, uh, to Columbia University and the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. Uh, congratulations uh, for your admissions. It's a very important achievement, and uh, we're very honored to, uh, to, to have you here, and hopefully soon as our students. Uh, the admissions process is something that we do very carefully. We look at every single document. Many people look at everything, every single thing that you include in your, in your application, so you can be sure that, that uh, you are here because we, we really uh, uh, liked what, what, you, what you've done so far and what you represent and what you bring to the, to the school. I'm going to explain a little bit uh, what we stand for, uh, what you're getting into. <laughs> uh, we're very, very... Uh, the school is really part of, it's very much anchored in New York. Uh, uh, as you see, Columbia's campus is a campus that is open to the streets and that it's actually that's something that we, we, we uh, here at GISA, we try to get as far as we can in connecting to, to our neighborhoods, to our communities, to the city and beyond. Uh, we're not an isolated school. We're a school that understands that our disciplines are deeply entangled with the realities that we care for and we don't claim our disciplines to be isolated or autonomous. We don't want to have discussions only with our peers. We want to make sure that we're connected to what is happening in the world, and especially to the tensions, the political, the technological, the, the cultural tensions that are shaping our futures. Uh, we're standing actually underneath, uh, we're here underneath the, the Avery Library, and this is something that is crucial for us. We really believe that knowledge is a way to get empowered and to be connected with others in, pro in projects that empower collective will and also that bring freedom and justice to societies and ecosystems. And we think that this is, this is our strength also, the, the, the anchoring to knowledge and to the formal production of knowledge and many other ways of, of disseminating it, making it circulate. Uh, so we're happy to be here. Uh, very literally underneath books and, and documents. And that's something that we intensively use as a resource for the school. And you will be really using the library very intensively and, and beyond that. Uh, but of course, we are also uh, here on top of other realities. And we started this year looking at what is underneath this here there's doors that if we open them we basically discover that there's water that is circulating underneath this building and this is crucial if we didn't have pumps permanently pumping the water this water that is showing how sea level rises is how, how sea level is rising good start covering our auditorium so what we do here is not let's say operate from a safe position actually last year these are videos that came did this is basically what happened here a few months ago. So we're in a moment that our work is needed. We really need to understand that there's no a safe position from which many of the tensions that we care for are pushing for us to make decisions, to action our ideas, to, uh, to become activists. In the past, we could imagine culture, this is from the 18th century, as a safe position from which you could see the risk of the world. But we understand now that this has been the attitude of modern cultures and often of our disciplines. Uh, these images are probably part of the past in the way they're showing that there's a possibility for, let's say, detached from the urgent transformations and uh, crises that are shaking the world. On the contrary, we believe that there's no safe position as our pumps uh, uh, taught us in the last months and that we really are needed in the world out there to respond to urgent matters. So you all are needed. Uh, there's, we're not going to have, let's say, uh, useless conversations among ourselves. We really want to have the capacity to operate in a world in transformation that is, uh, uh, is, is basically facing uh, difficulties and that needs to change and to transform. This, of course, is also something that we do through knowledge, established knowledge, scientific knowledge, facts that are unquestionable, but we also know that there's a high level of uncertainty uh, in the way we can impact the world and the way the world is evolving, and that's why we need to experiment. And this is a center that stands for experimentation, for challenge also knowledge, but not in any way 
we understand that there's a political and critical dimension to the experiments we do. Our laboratories are laborator laboratories that are uh, working with the, with the interests, with the affections, with the mobilization and representation of many actors, and we want to make sure that our experimentation is an engaged experimentation. That is what happens across programs. This is the, uh, the historic preservation program. This is part of the uh, natural material labs that the uh, MR program and the AD programs mostly participate, but of course this is open to all the programs across the school. Our work here is permanently based on uh, both uh, acknowledging and studying established knowledge, but also to challenge it and to deal with uncertainty through engaged experimentation. This is something that we do across programs all the time, and this is basically what we stand for and that what we invite you and expect you to, to be part of and to become part of. In a way, that allows also your, each of you to make decisions to shape your trajectory within the school in this very broad um, uh, cauldron of experimentation and knowledge, but also to make sure that whatever uh, trajectory you follow is really part of a, of a conversation with others, of our interaction, of, the, of a cohort you're part of, and this is the uh, a, a daily image of the computational design practices uh, group uh, that many of you are admitted to now. The second thing that I think is crucial for a school is that we're inter we really work, we're a school that, that, that can have the luxury of work across disciplines. In this same building, we have very different disciplines that work together, and that means that each of them uh, nurtures their differences, but also we interact with each other. And also, as students of GSAP, you can take courses across uh, 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 programs. You can even take courses uh, across other schools in the university, and we have this very, very uh, intentional uh, uh, set of programs, ecosystem of programs that also have already established uh, dual degrees and associations and alliances with other schools across campus. But this is not something that we just do through programs or administration. We do it very effectively as we're here. We have here the directors of each of the programs uh, at the back and some at the front. <laughs> uh, we have Patrice Derrington, uh, we have Felicity Scott, uh, we have Kate Orff and Laura Corgan, uh, we have Mario Gooden, uh, we have Jorge Otero Pailos, uh, and myself also as the AD director, and, uh, and we have basically a, a way of working uh, that, that each one is, is nurturing a difference, a very different approach. The CCCP is really problematizing what the rest of the people is doing, uh, whereas other, others are uh, uh, optimizing processes and thinking what is the way that things could be uh, uh, um, facilitated, and we, we have Jorge that is looking at the dust and uh, with the Historic Preservation Laboratory and Laura that is look at, looking at the way computational practices are becoming sites for criticality and we have uh, the MR program uh, with Mar Mario's leadership looking at uncertainty and, and entanglements as the, the way architecture operates relevantly in, in societies and ecosystems. We have KTOR developing forms of interspecies relationships and ecosystemic approaches to systemic design. So we have each of the programs are real estate is looking at the way value can be consolidated and can, uh, questions of affordability and even justice are addressed from the perspective of financial analysis and development. So each program is really looking at different tools, mobilizing different traditions, but with that, we built also a conversation together, and this is the common circle that Laura Kurgan and many faculty organize across the school to discuss uh, uh, questions of anti-racism across program and looking at what is the way that each discipline is contributing through their specific knowledge to confront racism and colonialism uh, in the built environment. And circles are not an accident. We also have these opportunities where we have a number of clinics where uh, students and faculty from different programs get together to resolve urgent issues that are not easy to, to address. And we also have a number of, of transdisciplinary uh, uh, courses that you can take in the school. But this is actually what we do. This is, for instance, part of the urban design and Kate, Kate Orff and David Smiley led uh, 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 super studio that brings together people from the climate school with people from UD and, and faculty also from planning. Uh, to discuss together the future of Colombian cities 
of specifically Cartagena, uh, uh, Bogota, and Cali, uh, addressing questions of ecology and water justice uh, in coordination and working uh, hand by hand with the mayors and the municipalities. And we had the other day a review where the mayors were basically around and they were discussing. Uh, and we have other circles. We have the, the CCP circle where people from all around the city, uh, cultural leaders, I would say, people that are basically uh, clever people from different fields, from art, uh, uh, theory, history, uh, are brought together to discuss the work and the development of the work of each of the students. And we have these circles moving around. This is a very run, right? In the, this, in the desert, in the middle of the desert, you can see the sun right on site uh, having these discussions. And uh, as also understanding, as you see, that we very much close for our proximity. We're very much close to what is happening in the next block here. But when we look at the next floor, we also understand that it's shaped by dynamics that are transnational, by migrations, by remittance, by histories of, of displacement and exploitation that are, can only be also uh, developed if we collaborate with others across the world transnationally. And this is what we do and what we want to do, and that's why our circles expand, expand, and, we, uh, and each time differently. And our circles also work through technology, and this is, of course, how could it not? The computational design practices program uh, does things differently, and as this specificity also translates in the way these conversations are built through uh, technological mediation. And of course, this is something that our school stands for. This is the place where the paperless studios were invented and discussed and responded and confronted and, and, and subverted, and many, many other things uh, happen. Uh, but also, we understand these other technologies are a crucial part of what we do. So we don't believe in the obsolescence, one technology uh, making obsolescence the others, but actually the possibility of building an ecosystem where all these different technological ranges and trajectories can be mobilized. The third thing that I think is crucial for our school is that we, we don't do, and this is things that I'm picking up. It's not that I promote them. It's that it, this is what basically I observe that is happening. So I'm, sharing with you information that I, I, I do through the ethnography of the school. But our practices are very situated. And by this, I mean that we don't do abstract speculation. Uh, what the work that we do here is highly situated. And that means that we take very seriously who we work with, how we work with people, how we actually uh, allow them to be part of what we do, and we allow ourselves to be part of what they do, and we build this alliances uh, on basis of justice and reciprocity. This is from, for instance, from the urban planning program and there's a high uh, knowledge and know-how across programs on how to do community work. Uh, but also we do that through other techniques. This, this is from the from a, 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 a work uh, that could only be done through uh, the, the tradition of the spatial practices that this, the the Laura Kurgan has been developing in the last decades and that understands that also this way of engaging and situating work uh, benefits from technological mediations, data, uh, other things that of course can only be addressed through uh, political tools and through uh, a critical perspective. This is for instance a studio work that is highly situated in the realities in the society and in the history of Atlanta. Uh, and of course, that's the way to, to uh, by Emmanuel Admasu, and that this is really the way to engage with the complexity that societies like Atlanta uh, uh, comprise and to, to, to situate our work in the nuances of these societies. And then the work, of course, becomes much more relevant and also much more public uh, in the way that it, it has a life uh, beyond the school. And of course, it requires representational efforts, uh, uh, theoretical efforts, uh, effort to conceptualize differently what we do. And of course, this is from the CCP uh, that is a great contribution to the school. I always think of the CCP as a, a little bit of a, a, a kind of subvertive uh, 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 commando within the school, right? <laughs> Infiltrated in what we do. And very literally now, there's a, a, a table at the, at the studios where the CCP students are observing and interrogating what the rest of the people do. Uh, but this is, of course, what we do, and this is why we also can address questions that maybe other schools cannot in a way that is relevant and that is fair to, to the world and the way we work with others. Uh, but this is inserted in our building. 
our building is really the, the first place where we situate, and that's why I wanted to reflect on the fact that we have water underneath, and this is uh, what we keep doing. So basically, we see uh, our close proximity as an opportunity to interrogate how our practices and our disciplines operate. And as, as part of this, of course, there's many other initiatives. The school also makes big efforts uh, to not, not only expand our knowledge, but actually think that the only way to be part of a community is also to be reciprocal to the knowledge that the community already has. And we want to give the tools or develop the tools and the uh, diplomacy and the efforts to bring others here, listen to them, le <coughs> learn from them, and cooperate with them in the production of knowledge and activism. And that's what we do, for instance, with the community fellows and other initiatives where we invite people from our communities, from uh, New York and from, from other places also to come here and to, to become part of the, the university. When we look across programs, <clears throat> there are certain issues and topics and approaches and perspectives that, again, in a, if we do a, a, a scanning of the school, are growing as import, more and more important. I would say that regrounding, uh, understanding that basically our practices are anchored in very specific realities and that we have to measure uh, what we do, what's, what are the limits and what are the agencies of what we do by looking very carefully, uh, carefully at the way that we, whatever we do is entangled with specific realities is very important. And this is not just an acknowledgement. It requires a specific methodologies, ways of working that allow the work we do to be both effective and representing this very deep uh, 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 concern about how our practices are grounded in, 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 the, in, in realities that are unstable, that are conflicted, that are problematic, and that are also providing opportunities and agencies. And that's something that we do across programs, uh, and we do differently way, in, different way, in different ways in each of the programs. And of course, it requires very precise tools, and, or very non-precise, in some cases, tools, uh, that we nurture uh, in each program differently, but also across. And it also requires books and research and a scholarship that is produced in the school very quite massively and in a very relevant way. And also creative way. Methodologies that we develop here then become very impactful in other places. Uh, climate regimes, of course, how could it not be a, a crucial aspect of what happens here? We have a huge focus on climate and climate uh, knowledge, but also climate action. And this is something that, that again, requires a specific knowledge, uh, but also tools, but also experimentation. And that's something that we do through a scholarship and coalitions, and, uh, but also through uh, uh, experimentation, through mobilization of existing uh, 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 opportunities that design computational practices, critical uh, practices, uh, uh, planning, urban design, uh, preservation, a uh, real estate offer. And of course, this is again a focus of the scholarship, the tools, the computational developments, the uh, urban planning experiences uh, that we do, and of course that, convey, that we convey and make public all the time. And I could speak only, a, you know, for hours only about this dimension of the school. But also it's an opportunity to engage with others as we could not do otherwise. And the third is decolonizing and confronting racism. Uh, as we all know, many of our, practi or our practices are deeply rooted in modern traditions that we need to confront at this point. And that is something that is exciting at the same time that is needed and is, is fair that we do this. And we are doing this across programs again. This is a work from the AD, uh, Ruth Garcia and Natalie Fran uh, Fr uh, Frankowski uh, developed last summer with students. This is, of course, uh, books that have been pioneering ways for our disciplines to confront racism and to understand how modern traditions are uh, in inevitably or intrinsically connected to the unfolding of racism and coloniality across the world. Uh, we do it through work that, uh, studio work like this uh, by Emmanuel Admasu, or this work by uh, Mabel Wilson in the studio that, in the advanced studio that Mabel Wilson and Jordan Car Carver uh, developed uh, uh, last year. Uh, this is, for instance, the studio of Cabage, uh, uh, um, um, uh, Estela Mutegi and, and, and Cabage from Cape Bureau developed last summer, uh, decolonizing museum institutions in New York. 
And the, the fourth, I would say that, of course, we could find others and recombine them differently, but the fourth is a, 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 a very radical transformation from a culture of extraction to a culture of mutual care. And again, this we could find across programs. This is from architecture, uh, and this is also from Advanced Studio 5 and Jean Liu. And definitely a different take on technology. We're not thinking that technology in itself it's uh, determining what the future of societies and ecosystems are, but rather that technology is a site for dispute, an arena for criticality, where so many different options and alternatives and forms of dissidence to mainstream can be nurtured. And this is, for instance, work from the computational design uh, uh, program, uh, looking at the last mile as an opportunity to rethink uh, social justice. Or, and that's something, of course, that we also do through different ways to approach uh, 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 skills. And, and, and that is a tool that was developed last year by the CDP program, uh, these skill trials that allowed each student to, to work on the way that they, on, on their trajectories, the, the uh, instrumental, uh, or the, the, the skills trajectories that they need to have according to what they want to achieve. And of course, that's also something that translates into other ways of thinking our disciplines and the way they perform from architecture to real estate to, to urban planning to urban design to, to historic preservation. This is, for, in for instance, the work of uh, the students of Anthony Banke in, in urban planning. Or well, this is, for instance, uh, uh, the, 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 the work of, uh, of the Exploring Urban da Data course uh, and this is uh, uh, Studio uh, f Six, right? right? By Ada Giuseppe and, and um, yeah, Adam Giuseppe. Uh, this is Marwa Ciuta Studio, work from students from Marwa Ciuta Studio. All of them are opportunities to explore technology in depth, but also understanding that any exploration of technology is a critical exploration of also the frames in which it is happening. And, uh, and it's, it also implies take responsibility of what is the way that it is used politically. Uh, and that, of course, we are uh, always uh, happy to experiment with whatever is out there, but again, taking a very serious uh, approach to it. And the last one that I want to mention, and I, I could go on on others, but these are the ones that I observe that are emerging from our school, is the possibility of understanding cosmopolitics biopolitics, ecology, as something that goes much beyond uh, the culture of sustainability and that is actually embedded in the world that we are part of in our bodies, in the way our bodies expand ecosystemically in environments, climate, technology, society, cities. And that way of understanding, for instance, gender uh, is explored by in very different ways across the school. Also, is, the, the, is, is something that we produce a scholarship that of course becomes very impactful about. And we also have a specific experiments of, for instance, the way different uh, uh, species negotiate their coexistence. And that's also uh, uh, reflected in specific buildings and designs that our students do. And this was awarded with the Paris Award. Or of course, major work by, by uh, our faculty like Kate Torf and the work with her office, uh, Escape, and the, as you know, Kate Torf director of the uh, um, urban design program. I want to say that uh, this room is seen many things, good and bad things, I would say. <laughs> many, many disputes, many discussions. Basically, this has been the site where many of the ideas that circulate in the fields uh, of the built environment originated and also where they were questioned and confronted and, uh, and that we keep doing. We understand our school as a compulsory passing point of the making of this course practice and theory on the disciplines of the built environment. And this is not only for ourselves. It's something that we do in conversation with people from many different fields. These are photographs of events that we have this year. It's the World Wars here. Uh, uh, e. Al Weisman was here, brought by the CDP program in conversation with Laura uh, uh, Corgan. Uh, we have Laura Poitras who came here to present and discuss the only place where she came to discuss uh, her last movie, uh, All the Beauty and the Blood Set, uh, where specific discussions about the built environment, surveillance, uh, uh, the, the uses of technology to control 
population and citizenship uh, were questioned in connection with art and artistic practices in, the, in New York and the way that power, financial power, took over the control on art and what is the way that uh, was confronted by people like Nan Golding and the collectives he was part of. And that happened here and that kept happening. Uh, we have Helle Schohold here. Uh, we have Raven Chacon. Uh, we have Emmanuel Admasso in conversation with, with Ateya, the faculty of our, of our school. We have Punsen Pranjada. Uh, we have Becca Lemoine. So basically what I'm trying to say is that we, the school is basically a cauldron that is, I would say, one of the world nodes where the evolution and the, the, the politics of the built environment are permanently be questioned and where alternative ways of, of thinking them and practicing uh, it's uh, uh, presented and we, uh, we make sure that whatever new thing is happening or old thing, this is for instance the, the, the moment where we discuss the long trajectory of Ground Labor uh, here in this auditorium uh, and this is of course something that is very lively and participated by faculty. We have here Cecilia Vicuña in an event that was organized to discuss monuments uh, on the occasion of, of the recent Chilean events that was organized by, by Jorge Otero Pailos and the uh, uh, Historic Preservation Program. Uh, so basically, and we, everyone is invited tonight. We will have one of these very important discussions tonight with our very own Juan Herreros that has been teaching here for 17 years and it's been producing some of the most relevant buildings that have ex experimented forms for no novel forms of social uh, association and, and articulation, like the Munch Museum in, in the Oslo Harbor that was opened last year. And that was happening at 6.30, and there will be also an opportunity to, to discuss it afterwards, having drinks out here at Brownies. And, and we have, uh, but we also, we, we, we also understand that our responsibility is to stabilize this knowledge, these discussions, and that's why we have a publishing house right here. And, and many of you will be also connected to this. And this publishing house is permanently producing books and discussing and circulating what they, these are the next books that are uh, coming up. Uh, the amazing book on the, on the air and the urban essence of the air of Nera Calvillo, for instance, Rabbi Talco and Turban Balen, their entire work on, on bodies and technology and many others. And we have, an, I mean, I, I could go on and on uh, forever. You will need uh, the entire, your entire program to find out uh, and to connect to all these things, but I'm giving you a preview, a sneak preview. But we have a number of centers that are very active and that are shaping the, the cultural and critical life of the school, the Buell Center, which is engaged now on a, on a long project on uh, interrogating land uh, as relational, not as a given. And this is run by Lucia, directed by Lucia Le, the Center for Spatial Research that is directed by Laura Kurgan, who is up, uh, up here, that has been doing for the last decade, right, or more than that, uh, amazing work that has transformed the way cities, territories, societies have be, are imagined and mobilized. And that's something that, of course, is everywhere and is influential. In, in the way we think now about societies, cities, ecosystems, and keeps happening, and many of you will work on this very directly. The Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes that had this amazing conference uh, and symposium this, this year, and that produces this very, very impactful and relevant knowledge on ecology and climate. Uh, Preservation Technology Laboratory, uh, run and directed by Jorge Otero, uh, uh, Pilos, and, and all the members of the of the uh, Historic Preservation Group. This is something, a resource for the entire school. Many of you in other programs will want to use this and it's totally open. Uh, uh, the, the, the Historic Preservation team makes this very available and actually I invite you to take a look. It's quite fun to see all the, the, the work that they're doing there. And actually they're doing also work across our building. They're exploring what are the different layers of painting that we have in different points now. And we have many other uh, uh, the, uh, labs and initiatives. The post-conflict cities lab is actually looking at the Middle East and other forms of contested urbanism across the world and also connecting it to the way uh, marginalized communities have related to urbanism in the U.S. Uh, and this is, this is directed by Hiba Bowakar, an amazing uh, faculty member from the UP program that is also very much uh, bridging the UP program with architecture, with other fields. 
Lola Lola Benalon's Natural Material Lab that I already mentioned that is looking at materiality as something that contains life in itself and retains life in itself, and is doing that in a very uh, relevant and radical way. Uh, we have the Extraction Lab that is, uh, uh, Christoph Kuntzub is here, and, and it's doing amazing work as well. The Global Africa Lab uh, that Mabel Wilson and Mario Gooden <laughs> are running, which is incredibly relevant. It's been working for a long time now. And it's, it's pioneering a different way to understand uh, the, 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 the way our disciplines unfold politically. Uh, the Urban Heritage Sustainable and Social Inclusion Initiative that, uh, that Erika Abrami, who is a, a very important faculty uh, of historic preservation, has been running for the last years and doing very relevant publications uh, alongside uh, students from the UP program. Uh, the Embodied Energy Initiative that David Benjamin uh, has been running and that has done amazing contributions even to think uh, uh, very important buildings in the city, the collecting architectural territory. This is an ecosystem, the GSAP incubator that helps students once they graduate to develop a specific projects that they can, that can situate them as uh, uh, or that can create the niche where they want to practice. I mean, I don't want to overwhelm everyone, the gist of incubator, the, uh, but what I'm trying to say is that this is an ecosystem of people that are really carefully engaging with societies and ecosystems that are enthusiastic about doing it and that are very happy to share this with our students. We really are a faculty that is incredibly diverse, but there's a few things that unite us. We all share the importance of what we do. We understand how important it is what we do in the future of the world. We want to engage politically through what we do and critically in transforming the world to something that is more inclusive, most fair, more fair, more just, also most fun, beautiful, and inclusive. And we want to do it with you. Uh, we don't expect you to be instructed. We are not instructing students. We actually have this very complex ecosystem because we want you to come here with your own ideas, your own cultures, your own sensitivities, and navigate our ecosystem to shape your trajectory. We want each of you to be different in the way you're different already, to bring your what is important for you, but to find a way to grow on that and become very relevant contributors to our societies. This is what we do, and that's why we need this very broad and complex ecosystem that, of course, I explained to you and we will we will keep helping you to navigate it, but the goal is that you have the capacity to shape your trajectory in the school as you make decisions about what is the way that you want to be part of our societies. And in many of the programs, that also implies that we offer STEM, which allows you to, for those that are not, don't have a, a U.S. passport, allow them to allow you to to work in the city. And we also have. Uh, career services that are helping you uh, transition to your professional or next academic steps, and that's also important. We have our graduates go to many, many different positions. Some of them become important in NGOs. Others uh, play important roles in uh, uh, big offices, architectural offices. Others go back to positions that they had in the past, and they get uh, a, a more important role there, or they want to do activism, or they want to create new forms of practice, or they want to pursue an academic uh, a career, or the others want to combine practice with teaching, and we help you uh, navigating and bridging the next steps. And the student life, of course, is, is not only about having fun, we have fun, but we also do many other things, and that's why we have this uh, also uh, broad and diverse opportunities for student groups. We have the Black Student Alliance, the GSAP, GSAP X Plus. Uh, we have the Queer Students and Archi of Architecture Planning and Preservation. We have the American Planning Association. We have the National Organization of Minority Architects, the student chapter. You know, like we have the Latin GSAP. Uh, we have the Masaha uh, that was crucial during the recent Beirut crisis. The Women in Real Estate Development, and the Urban Magazine the Urban China Forum, but these are the groups that we have now, but each of you can uh, open new, new student groups and we will be happy to support them to, to help with the funding. I want to say that we also think that there's a great responsibility for us 
to be part of it. We are part of the world. We want to make sure that we are part of the world, but we also understand that this is not the same that uh, celebrating globalization, but we want to make sure that wherever we uh, connect with, it's also we're building uh, long-lasting relationships. And that, of course, brings new circles. It's, for instance, it's, a, it's a wolf that is, uh, we're connecting with her practice uh, in Cabo Verde, and uh, our students are working with people there uh, uh, through her. And this is, of course, another way of building these circles. So this is where we are. This is Avery Hall. And we're very happy to welcome you here uh, on top of this street that we need to make efforts to, to retain away from our carpet, but also underneath this library. Thank you very much for coming here today.